Welcome back. Yes, it is only Wednesday. Bank fraud, tax fraud, insurance fraud, very scary if you're sued for that in civil court, but absolutely terrifying if it's in criminal court. And for Donald Trump and his kids, this little nugget from the New York Attorney General today might just make them sit up and dial their criminal attorneys ASAP. We believe the conduct alleged in this action also violates federal criminal law, including issuing false statements to financial institutions and bank fraud. And we are referring those criminal violations that we've uncovered to the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York and the Internal Revenue Service. The Attorney General is referring all of this to the feds, the DOJ and the IRS. And that could mean federal charges, federal criminal charges, with serious implications for Donald Trump and his kids. The feds do not mess around. They have a conviction rate higher than 90%. And jail time means hard time in a federal lockup with very little time off for good behavior. Ira Sorkin knows the ins and outs of all of this. He defended one of the most famous financial criminals of all time, Bernie Madoff. He also defended another famous client, Jordan Belfort, the real Wolf of Wall Street. Sorkin was also the former deputy chief of the criminal division of the Southern District of New York, and he ran the New York office of the SEC. So you are the perfect guest, Mr. Sorkin, to ask you right off the bat your reaction to what you heard from the New York AG today in 200 allegations. Well, the, the first answer is that I don't have to go to the gym because lifting up that civil complaint is enough of an exercise to keep you going for a week. Uh, it is a problem in terms of the number of counts and how to present that case to a jury. It's a very complicated case, and it's going to be very difficult for prosecutors to present a case of that magnitude. It's going to go on for weeks and weeks and months and months, because civil cases in the state court system move a lot slower than in the federal system. That's not a criticism of the state, but you're gonna see in this case, motions on top of motions, appeals on top of appeals. It's a trial that's gonna last for a very, very long time, assuming that Mr. Trump and his co-defendants, his three children, go to the mats and continue to fight the case and litigate the case. Well, Mr. Sorkin, to that, and we already know Letitia James has said no deals. There will be no deals, meaning don't even knock. This is going to, I mean, that's my next question for you is that if this thing does go to court, it would go to court in Manhattan, right? And Manhattan doesn't, it is not considered very friendly to Donald Trump. Um, it's one of his least, you know, favorite places at this point in terms of voters. And, um, that would be the jury. And those jurors, by the way, in Manhattan, many of them are financially savvy. I think about all those jurors in Enron, you know, and then even in Madoff. They eventually do get it. It's tricky, but they eventually do get it. Is this a big problem for him, this suit, or is it a bigger problem, the fact mm -hmm. that it's been referred to the IRS and the DOJ? Well, first of all, getting a referral to the IRS, to the DOJ, uh, with allegations of insurance fraud, bank fraud, tax fraud, the Southern District of New York is going to look at this case fresh. They're going to see, because their burden is much greater. If this goes criminal, the burden is, everyone knows, beyond a reasonable doubt. Civil case, the burden is much less. So, so I think from the standpoint of Mr. Trump and his children, I think the most damning part of this case is the fact that it's going to be referred to the federal authorities. The federal authorities uh, are going to look at this thing from the standpoint of the statutes that they're going to have to try to prove. I'm not the least bit concerned about a jury panel uh, because, as you just said, there's an argument to be made that New Yorkers don't particularly like Mr. Trump. But don't forget, New York has been the center of trying worldwide major rug dealer, drug dealers, terrorists, uh, mafioso, uh, and that has not prevented a jury from being selected. So the argument always will be made by defense lawyers that my client can't get a fair trial because there's been so much pre-trial publicity that uh, we need to change venue. We need to move this case uh, to uh, Northern District of Montana, if there is a Northern District. 
I think there's only one right. district where he might get a fair trial. But I don't think judges are going to be swayed by that because the allegations are focused on New York and jurors have never been exposed for prejudice in some of the major cases this country has seen for the last hundred years. Right. And the, and the you know, uh, the D.A., you can't move it to Montana if it's a state case. It's got to stay in the state. No, you could you move up to Albany. You know, there's a friendlier crew of potential jury pool there. But um, every every defense lawyer is going to say you can't get a fair trial in New York. Uh, that's not going to fly. Yeah, OJ got a jury. Casey Anthony got a jury. I always say, don't ever tell me you can't get a jury. You can get a jury. If OJ yeah. can get a jury, you can get a jury. Okay, I got this other question for you. I only have two minutes, but I, I got to get you sure. on this. So is this case winnable? Given, like, I have not read all 270 plus pages of this. I will by the end of the week, hopefully. But, but what I saw laid out just in the fairly brief news conference, uh, laying out the highlights, made me think that she's really connected the dots and already she's sort of taken a you know mega blaster to what would be donald trump's defense which is i have advisors the advisors tell me what to do i do that call the advisors if you have a problem with what's happened the problem is is that she says she's got the receipt saying the advisors told him to do this and he yanged instead of yinged so isn't that kind of the smoking gun on on a civil case no. the, the paper trail well, the short answer is yes and no. The yes is that it is a case where she apparently has devoted an enormous amount of staff to look at this. It's been going on for three years plus. She has subpoenaed thousands, millions of documents, and they've spent their time on it. That is a problem for them because they have to present that case, which is terribly complicated, to a jury. On the other hand, they don't have to win every count in the in, in the civil complaint. If they get one or two here, that might be enough to impose the sanctions that uh, the AG is looking for. You don't have to have you don't have to hit, you know, a thousand. Batting uh, 330 is pretty good. And if she wins some of those counts, she wins some of those counts. That might be just enough. As for trying to get rid of the case. Uh, it's not going to be easy because everything we've all heard and read, it's a very tight organization. It's not a public company. And there are very few people in a position, from what I've read, and I think the public has read, uh, that everything runs through the Trumps. Their decisions are made. Ira Sorkin, I have 20 seconds left, but I have to ask you, if someone knocks on your door uh, from the Trump world and asks you if you'll represent him in this, Given the background that you've got, would you take this case? If I don't have any conflicts, the answer is everybody's entitled to a defense. I've represented some people who've done some very bad things. I was a prosecutor. I prosecuted people who've done things. Mr. Trump is entitled to the best defense he can get. The problem he's run into, of course, is that he apparently doesn't listen to his lawyers, those who are bad and those who are good. So you're dealing with a very difficult client in trying to guide him uh, in uh, in the defense of this case. I'll take that as a yes. The answer is yes. OK, I love hearing that because I'm a big fan of lawyers and I'm a big fan of why this country is great. And that is that we are all entitled to a defense and we're innocent until proven guilty. Ira Sorkin, thank you. I hope you'll come back again. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.